And so even though there's a majority of liberals and Democrats there now, and some rhinos, we can make a change this November. In fact, we can make a change even a little sooner than that, come May 18th, out where uh, John Murthy used to live. There's a special election with a uh, fine young man named Tim Burns, who's uh, carrying the banner uh, of conservatism. We can pick off a seat right there in, on May 18th, so it's sooner than you think. And come uh, November, you'll be able to uh, be voting for Melissa. Melissa, house track over there for Congress. But as these elections approach, we have a word of warning. Be wary of the third party candidates. There's a time and a place for that. Be also beware of those movements that say, throw all the bums out. Uh, if they're talking about just bums, that's okay, but when they try to say, get rid of everybody in Congress, why would you want to get rid of Ron Paul? Why would you want to get rid of Jim DeMint, or Tom Coburn, or Jim Imhoff, or Eric Cantor? You don't want to do that. You want to be wise and selective in your approach. Third party movements have their place, but it's the third party movement that gave, uh, gave us Ross Perot and Bill Clinton. It's the third party movement in Minnesota that has that Klein Al Franken down in Washington. Third party movement in Virginia gave us uh, Jim Webb. Claire McCaskill in Missouri is in office because of a third party. They just squeak through. And so some purist comes in with a third party saying, well, this guy's only 80% in my views, on, on my values, so I'm going to run because I'm 100%. And they siphon off the votes in, in almost every third party effort. The liberal ends up winning. So beware of those type of movements. I'm not saying that it's not all, it's a, you know, you, there are places, obviously up in New York's 23rd district last year, 